Welcome to my lecture online. So here we're starting to look at a damped harmonic motion equation. Again, we start with F equals ma. It looks like lots of things in physics start with F equals ma, a very powerful equation. But in this case, there are two forces. There's a force of the spring and the force because of the damping effect. And so this is where these are defi defined. Let's Turn the equation around, ma equals the force from the spring plus the force due to damping. And instead of a, we can write it as the second derivative of position with respect to time. The force caused by the spring is minus kx, and the force caused by the damping effect is minus some constant times the velocity. So it's a linear, the force, the damping force is a linear function of the velocity, double the velocity, double the damping force, and that's a pretty good model that works for this kind of thing. So instead of writing v, we're going to write it as the first derivative of x with respect to time. Then we're going to move all the terms over to one side. Everything now becomes positive, equals zero. Divide both sides by m to get a one in front of the square term. And then notice, instead of writing the second derivative of x with respect to time, we write it as x double dot. Instead of writing dx dt, we write x dot. Instead of x, well, we still write x. So notice we have a coefficient in front of x dot, coefficient is in front of x. And then we can solve that. That's a differential equation. We can solve that using the characteristic equation. Now it looks like an algebra equation that can be solved using the... the um, the equation to solve second order functions. So we have minus this term, so minus b over m plus or minus the square root of this term squared minus four times a times c, which is k over m. And then we realize that this lends itself to three possible solutions of the differential equation. Because when we look at the radical, what's underneath the radical can either be greater than zero, can either be equal to zero, or can either be less than zero. Depending upon what the situation is here, depending upon the values for b and the values for k, we're going to have three different possible solutions. And on the next videos, we'll explore what those solutions look like. But you can see that it's simply a result of that radical, because, because a radical could be negative, it could be equal to zero, or it could be greater than zero. So if we take a look at it, hmm, if b squared over m squared is greater than 4k over m, then this is positive. Now that can only happen if b is large. So we have a large damping effect, this will be, um, this will be greater than zero. If b is a little bit smaller in such a way that b squared over m squared is equal to 4k over m, then we have this situation right here, where the difference is zero, they call that critical damping. And then finally, when we end up with this being less than this, if, if there's a very small damping effect, then we end up with a negative quantity in the radical, and then we have this whole thing being less than zero, and of course that is the result of a small amount of damping. So large damping, medium or critical damping, and li little damping. So that's large damping, that's a large damping effect. This would be critical damping, and then this here would be little damping. In the next video, we'll give it some more proper terms, but that gives you kind of the feel for what's happening here, depending upon the result of what's the neat radical. And so that's the general way of looking at damp, uh, damp situations where we have oscillatory motion, but it's damping, so the oscillations slowly diminish, depending upon how much damping we have. So we'll look at those three different solutions in the videos to come.